In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can add multiple parts to one staff in MuseScore. And this comes up all the time when we're composing music. For example, if you've ever had to write a Bach chorale, you'll know that if we're writing in short score, we're going to want to have a soprano part and an alto part on the same staff. And the soprano part is going to have the stems pointing upwards and the alto part will have the stems pointing downwards. Just the same way we might be writing for a flute section in an orchestra and we need to show that the first flute is going to play one line of melody and the second flute is going to play another line. And so we always need this ability of adding multiple parts to our music. Unfortunately, MuseScore makes that really, really easy. So we've got really good at adding elements to the score. We can just add, enter note input mode and start adding things in. Here's some A's. But what if I needed to have another part going on at the same time as these A's? Let's imagine that we had uh, two flutes playing some music here and one of them was going to play the top part and another one was going to play the bottom part. Well, the easiest way of doing that in MuseScore is actually adding a second part to the music. And the parts are controlled by these buttons up here or you can press Command or Option, Alt and a number and that will give you the different voices that are available. Every single staff that you have in your MuseScore composition has the ability to add four different voices to it. And really, the music is getting quite complicated if you have four voices on the same staff. Chances are you're pretty close to needing to separate out into two different staves if that's the case. What I want to do now is add a second voice to this staff. I've written in the first voice that plays these crotchet A's. I want to add a second part or a second voice that is playing minim F's. You'll have noticed as I've been writing in music all the way through this course, whenever I've had a note selected, it's turned blue. And in fact, when we've played the music, it's also turned blue like this. And you could just assume that whenever you select a note in MuseScore, it turns blue. That would be a very sensible thing to assume. But actually, that blue color is denoting the part or the voice that is being selected and being worked on in the score at that time. And blue is the color that denotes voice one. If we want to add a second voice or a second part to our music, we're gonna to need to activate another one of the voices that are available to us in our staff. And I'm gonna do that right now. And the way I'm gonna do that is by clicking on the button here, this button at the top, which has a number two on it. And you'll notice that the button goes green when I click on it. Now that is not a coincidence because voice two in MuseScore is always denoted by the color green. And once we've activated voice two, it becomes really easy for us to write the second voice into the score because as soon as we enter no input mode, what we'll see is that we get an option to now start adding some green notes to our staff. What I can't do here is add this note to the A and make a chord or any of these other A's because this is a completely different part, a completely different voice to the first part that I already wrote in. This will become really clear when I start putting some notes in. So I said I wanted to add some F's and I want these F's to be happening at the same time as the A's that I've already got. So I'm going to click here and you'll see that I'm actually creating a completely separate line of music and that line of music has its own notes and also importantly its own rests. So you'll see here the second half of the bar we've got a minim rest because it wouldn't be right otherwise to have a part that had only two beats in this bar we have to finish that bar off and the way we do that is by either writing a rest or we can write a note in here and you'll see that we have the ability to add this second part to our staff really with no effort at all and it's very separate from the first part that we already wrote in MuseScore already knows that it's the second part the stems go in the right direction because normally an F would have its stem going upwards but here it's going downwards to show us that this is the second part so if I was writing this line for flutes any orchestral flute section would know that the first player would play line one the A's with the stems going upwards and the second player would play line two or voice two or part two with the stems going downwards and this will become really useful as we go on and work with scores for different instruments in our composition.